Hey there, this is Gavin with the Compute Team, here to talk about how we can use ConfigCat feature flags for cloud tier user testing. The goal of this demo is to illustrate one possible user testing flow using ConfigCat feature flags. This demo is not the only pattern possible. There are a lot of opportunities to put the pieces of feature flags together to tell different user testing stories, whether we want to test different segments or percentages of the customer base, or sit down with specific users and show them some prototypes. A lot of these different possibilities are possible with ConfigCat. Um, today, we're just gonna show one pattern where we've got specific users in mind and we wanna show them different prototypes. Quick caveat, these patterns are new and untested. The backends only had ConfigCat enabled for a couple months. The UI just got access, so there's probably some work to do to facilitate this user testing and iron out some kinks. But this is what we've got so far. Before we dive in, uh, let's just go through a quick overview of the feature flag architecture we've built out for Cloud2. We're using a third-party SaaS product called ConfigCat, and that's where we configure our feature flag targeting rules. So we set those rules up in the ConfigCat console, and they're saved in the cloud, and then pulled down periodically by the Cloud2 cluster backend. So those services pull down these rules, and then they use the user ID, org ID, and other attributes associated with API requests to actually evaluate those rules and compute a specific flag value for each API request that comes in. So for example, we could turn on a certain feature for a specific user and have uh, that user get a specific feature flag value while all the other users sending API requests get the original value. If you look at the bottom left here, you can see that some of these feature flags can be opted in to also be exposed to the front end and used similarly there to control presentation and behavior on the front end. Uh, these are exposed by the API slash v2 slash flags endpoint, which is built into the existing UI framework, so they can be used like any other feature flags that we have. A quick overview of the demo we're going to do before we dive in. The first thing we're going to do is create a flag in the InflexDB configuration, and then we're going to consume that flag in the InflexDB UI code. These first two steps are all you need if you're doing a feature flag in OSS. Since we're focusing on Cloud2, we're then going to proceed to step three, where we're going to add our new flag to ConfigCat so we can control it there. And then we're going to deploy our flag to IDPE. We're actually just going to pretend and deploy it to my laptop for today. And then finally, step five, the rubber's going to hit the road, and we're going to configure the flag to return a different value for our different test users. And we're going to log in and we're going to see the page behave differently for each user. The example we're going to use today, you can see on the screenshot on the right, if you search for dashboards and your search criteria doesn't return anything, you see this message, no dashboards match your search term. For our contrived example today, we're going to pretend that we want to do some user testing on the language of that message. So we're going to return different messages for different users. Here I am in the flags.yaml file, which exists at the top level of the InfluxDB repository. I'm going to add a new configuration item here to describe the flag that we're going to be adding. We're going to call this flag uh, dashboards empty search results. We'll give the flag a description. We'll give it a programmatic key. This is the key that the computer uses to interact with the flag. We'll give it a default. We're going to actually set the default to the original message uh, that is currently shown to customers so that by default we don't change any behavior. I'll make myself the contact in case anybody has questions about this flag. And then finally, I'm going to set expose to true. This attribute is going to opt in this flag to be exposed to the front end so it can be used not only on the back end but also on the front end. And then I'm going to run one command here, make flags. That's going to generate some Go code based on this configuration. If you're just working in the UI, the fact that it's generating some Go code doesn't really matter to you. You don't need to interact with any Go code to use it. It just helps us maintain some type safety in the back end. So now we can consume our, our, our new flag in some code. I'm going to hop over here to the dashboards table empty component and we can see the original message here, no dashboards match your search term. We're going to comment that out and instead we're going to actually use the value that's coming back from our feature flag. We can do that like this. 
flag string is going to return the string value uh, at the key that we've provided, which is dashboards empty search results. And you'll notice that this key matches the key that we put into the configuration. Take note of this key because this key is really the, the ID of the flag and we're also going to use it when we configure ConfigCat in a moment. Here we are on the ConfigCat dashboard. We're going to add the flag here to correspond to the configuration we just added. We're going to add a text setting. Put the key in just like it was in the configuration file. The name will also make match, but it doesn't have to match necessarily. Oops. And then a description. Here you can see we can set initial values. Uh, we're not going to deploy this, so we don't care about production or tools right now, but we're going to use the acceptance environment and we'll set this again to just match the default original message. So you'll notice we've set a default in two different places. We've set a default in our local configuration. So if our code can't talk to ConfigCat, it has a default. But then also we're setting this initial value in ConfigCat. So ConfigCat is going to return this value for any users that it doesn't match. So for example, if we set a feature flag to change the language for one specific user, but not for anybody else, it's going to return this default value for everybody else. Finally, we'll click Add Text Setting. And then while we're in here, you can see it created it here. While we're in here, we're going to set our targeting for our specific text test users. So we click Add New Targeting Rule. We're going to provide our user's identifier. And then we can provide a, a different value. So the original message is uh, pretty neutral. No dashboards match or search term. Let's see. Maybe we want to experiment with being a little bit more mean to our customers. So no dashboards found, dummy. I'm not sure that will go over well, but we'll see. This is what user testing is for. And then maybe we want to try the other way. For a second user, we can try being a little bit nice and see which, which one our users prefer. Cool. So now we've configured uh, two different values for our two different test users. You'll note that I've scoped them by local slash local. You'll see in the other real examples, they're scoped by the actual environment provider and cluster name. Um, that's because we only have one config cat config for each deployment phase. So for example, uh, in acceptance, we've got multiple staging environments and uh, you'll need to indicate which staging environment your ID lives in. Since I'm running off my laptop, I've just set this to local for now. So it's a little bit strange. So now we're just going to save. And then we can hop into uh, the actual UI and see our flag get used. Okay. So now we'll log in with our default user first and we'll show that the feature flag by default shows the original value. There's that, no dashboards match your search term. Now we'll log in as our test user and we'll see that we get the feature flagged value returned. No dashboards found dummy. It's pretty mean. Then we can log in as our te second test user And we can see they get the second configured feature flag. So here we have three different users. Uh, by default, we see the original message. And then we've got two users that we're doing some user testing with. And we're testing a mean prototype and a nice prototype of this language. And that's basically it for user testing with ConfigCat feature flags in Cloud2. Here I've got some links that I'll provide with this presentation for some uh, more specific documentation to get into the nuts and bolts of it, as well as some ConfigCat 
concepts. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Thanks.